Hi guys, in this video we'll be introducing market failure, complete market failure, partial market failure and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. Okay, so to start off our discussion with market failure, we're going to think about what makes a market work. And we know that the price mechanism is the underpinning of a market, where uh, the use of market forces to allocate resources in order to solve the economic problem of scarcity. So it's this omnipotent, invisible hand that we talked about before that Adam Smith posited where it is the market forces that are going to lead to the most efficient allocation of resources possible, and that's all done through the price mechanism, where the price mechanism is sending out signals to the market and our economic agents are adjusting their behaviour as such. However, we're going to have to consider the fact that sometimes the price mechanism may sometimes perform unsatisfactory and fail to allocate resources efficiently. So suppose that we have a market here and we have all of the goods in one market are being allocated to just one firm as opposed to there being a more even or more efficient distribution of the resources to another firm then in this case we would conclude that there is an inefficient allocation and a situation in which we view an inefficient allocation of resources is described as market failure and market failure occurs when the market mechanism leads to a misallocation of resources in the economy. Now, market failure means that society could have been better off if resources were allocated in a different way. So it's almost as if they were allocated in the way that the market should have been. So in this instance, with our example of our resources that are being distributed by the market into our firms. In this case, this distribution of our resources to the firms is the most efficient allocation and therefore we are not experiencing the market failure in the previous example. So market failure means that resources in an economy could have been used in a more productive manner, which would have been more beneficial for society. And you can think about allocation and allocative efficiency that we saw with our PPF diagrams. And in general, we can conclude that market failure creates a welfare loss for society. And we'll explain some more ideas about welfare in later videos. Okay, so now we're going to begin to consider two types of market failure, and we're going to start with the most extreme case, which is complete market failure. So occasionally, the market may fail to produce certain goods and services, uh, despite there being a demand for goods. So we've thought about how a market has demand and supply and how supply is meeting that demand. I suppose that demand does exist within a market. Complete market failure is the case where there is no supply to meet that demand. That's what we're going to be considering in this situation. So the reason that we may have a lack of supply or no supply within the market may be due to the presence of certain conditions which mean that firms are unlikely to enter into our market. So we can imagine that there are some sort of barriers to entry for our firms to enter into the market. That means it is not feasible for these firms to do so. And when this occurs, when there is this barrier and we can't, the firms are not entering into the market, this is called complete market failure. And complete market failure is defined as when a market simply doesn't exist to supply products at all. So that means there's no firms in the market because firms are otherwise the producers in our economy. So there is no production and therefore there is no supply. And complete market failure is going to result in a missing market. So a missing market is a situation in which there is no market because the functions of prices have broken down. So despite there being a demand for the good in this market, it's not being conveyed in the price mechanism as uh, firms would enter in which case. So missing markets are going to occur in the case of pure public goods. And a public good is a good which is uh, non-rivalrous and non-excludable, but we will continue talking about public goods in a later video. But some examples of our pure public goods will include the national defence, prison systems, a probably more common one would be clean air, and then finally we can think of street lighting as a 
public good. Now, public goods are going to be described as any goods or services which provide benefits for consumers, but will not provide any benefits for the producers. So let's understand what some benefits are for the consumers. Well, we're going to have, there's going to be increased safety for our drivers. As the roads are now going to be more clear and visibility will increase and equally more lighting might be safer for pedestrians. And that's for similar reasons that we described with our drivers where they might have higher visibility. But now let's think about what kind of benefits that a producer would get from street lighting. And quite honestly, there, there aren't. They, the firm doesn't benefit uh, particularly from the increased safety for drivers or the increased safety for pedestrians. Instead, they are going to be dealing with, in the provision of our street lighting, the cost of production associated with providing street lighting. And equally, it's quite difficult to say to consumers that they are going to sell our light to us. And arguably, the benefits that a producer gains from their production is some sort of revenue stream or profit. But it's quite difficult for a provider of street lighting to uh, sell light to the public or to consumers. It's not easy and therefore unlikely that they ever will sell it. And therefore, there are no profits made. So this will mean that our public goods are unlikely to be produced in a market as producers will be unable to make profits. And profit, if we assume that our firm's profit motivated or that's their main objective, then that is a further reason to believe why we would consider that there is a case for complete market failure. Okay, so now we're gonna consider probably one of the more common types of market failure, which is partial market failure. And partial market failure occurs when the market functions but produces the wrong quantity of a good or service. So it's not to say that the market has no supply. There is some sort of market function where there is a supply that is meeting our demand. But we're saying there is a partial market failure because there is a wrong quantity of a good or service. So the efficient quantity of a good or service is not being supplied to the market or demanded. So, like we said, most market failures are partial market failures. And some examples that we will build on in future videos are with regards to pollution, the under-provision of vaccines, and a very key market failure that we are going to talk about is where we are experiencing information gaps within our market. Now, when a market partially fails, the good or service may be provided too cheaply, such as cigarettes. And cigarettes, they were very cheap to produce a couple of decades ago. So there was a, definitely a quite a high amount of overproduction of them. And as they are quite cheap to produce, the price of them was very low. And so there was an overconsumption of cigarettes. And uh, in later videos, we'll learn about how governments and policymakers try to address overproduction and overconsumption of goods, which are provided too cheaply and are not leading to a more a most efficient allocation of goods. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.